<coughs> Great day, young philosophers. Welcome to our second teleconference in Introduction to the Philosophy of the Human Person. But before we delve deeper to our formal discussion for our today's academic session, may we have the opening prayer first to be led by Ma'am Ron Mejia. All together we say in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, the wellspring of goodness and blessings, we give you thanks and praise as one to wish and community. The graces you incessantly grant upon us and your divine providence have sustained our beloved university throughout the years of mission and excellence. Having been founded by the Congregation of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, we pray that you keep us committed and dedicated to our mission and identity to serve the church and the society as we become living witnesses to the gospel values proclaimed by Jesus. For if we are steadfast in our good and beautiful mission, our works will bring success not only to ourselves, but also to those whom we are bound to love and serve. Inspired by St. Louis, our patron saint, who was filled with a noble spirit that steered him to love you above all things, May we also live believing that we are born for a greater purpose and mission as we dwell in your presence all the days of our life. Grant all these supplications through the intercession of Mother Mary and through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you so much, Ma'am Ra'an, for that meaningful prayer. Now, class, as we venture to our new topic, which is the methods of philosophizing, I have one reminder, and that is to find your most comfortable place where internet connection is stable. Take note, class, that intermittent connectivity is a given problem. Please exhaust all means to personally address it. Now, are you ready to venture the methods of philosophizing? All right, now let's move to the Socratic Method. Class, what do you mean when we say Socratic Method? So class, when we say Socratic Method, it actually came from the Greek term elenchus or argument refutation. Or let's just say in English term to inquire or to cross-examine. So class, when we say Socratic method, it actually deals to realize a certain statement if it is a false or it is a true. Likewise, if it wants to serve as a lie and it wants to know about the truth. So when we say Socratic method class, we usually um, delve with the different questions like questions about clarification, questions like probe assumptions, questions like knowing about reasons, and at the same time, questions about questions. So what do we mean by those questions that I've told you a while back? For example, questions of clarification. You usually do this in our classroom, right? Questions of clarification like in your mathematics. Ma'am, what do you mean when we say X? What do we mean when we say Y? What do we mean when we say mathematics? Okay, that is an example of questions of clarifications. In other term, questions that probe reason and evidence is this is like this. Okay, what do you think it is true? Okay, what makes it true? Oh, or how could you answer the objection? Maybe that questions that probe implications or can consequences may lead to this kind of question. Who could you settle this question? Okay, so that is an example of Socratic method questions. So class, it is also known as midwifery method or the art of endless questioning. So in other words, class, Socratic method would mean in an answer and question portion or 
If you want to know about truth, there must be a question and answer strategy. And that would be under the Socratic method. So another information about Socratic method class is it is named after the Greek philosopher Socrates who taught students by asking question after question. Take note class that Socrates is the wisest among the Trinity philosophers, Plato and Aristotle, Soviet Socrates. But like what I've said a while back, Socrates is the wisest among. The principle underlying the Socratic method is that the students learn through the use of critical thinking, reasoning, and logic. So the very essence or the very goal of the Socratic method is for you students to solidify your knowledge of the case or by thinking critically under pressure. So in other terms, like what I've said a while back, it must be used through the critical, through reasoning, through logical thinking, because you are thinking beyond the natural powers of our thinking, or let's just say thinking beyond thinking. And that would be end the Socratic method. Now let's move forward to the Cartesian or the metric, methodic method to be presented by Mr. Mark Arnold. Well, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Ia, for that very good introduction. The introduction. Let's now proceed to the second method, which is known as the Cartesian method or methodic tab. Cartesian method was introduced by René Descartes and no less than the father of the modern thought. So meaning to say that the Cartesian method is the product of modern philosophy. Okay? Second, um, as Descartes would say, he believed that knowledge can proceed or start from very few premises or starting points just like mathematics. So yung, the foundation of the philosophy of Descartes comes from mathematics because mathematics is so precise, mathematics is so uh, is exact, so doon niya kinuha yung method na ito. Okay? So we proceed. So he suggests that we doubt as far as we can until what is left is already beyond doubt. So ano yung ibig sabihin nito class? That mag-doubt ka ng mag-doubt na mag-doubt until wala ka nang madaw. And once you reach, you reach that end of your doubt, meaning to say you reach this what calls, uh, what Descartes calls absolute knowledge or certitude. And that is truth. Okay? Let's proceed. So with that uh, doubting process, Descartes founded his philosophy his, or his famous uh, maxim which is Cogito ergo sum, or in English, it says, I think, therefore, I am. Okay? So, an example of this, an example of this methodic doubt class is itong napapanood natin sa KMJS. Okay? In which, yung ina-employ na method sa show na to is Cartesian method, in which, ginadoubt nila yung isang theory or theory ginadoubt nila yung isang concept until malaman yung buong katotohanan nung kwento na yun. And one of the best, if not one of the most controversial segment na meron or story na meron ang KMJS is yung ghost ship. So, nung may palabas yung ghost ship, ang in-employ na method para malaman yung buong story ha, kung ano ba yung totoo sa 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 story nyo is this Cartesian method. So, ang ginawa ng mga writers, ang ginawa ng mga ng mga writers doon is denout yung story about that ghost ship until what is left is yun nga, totoong ship yun nandoon. Okay? So, that is an example of Cartesian method. Okay? So, Descartes being a rationalist, he does not trust experience. So, when we say he does not trust experience, para sa kanya is yung 
experience being derived from our senses, our senses deceives us. That's why hindi niya pinagkakatiwalaan yung experience. The second thing is Descartes does not trust tradition because according to him, a tradition is tainted with biases and errors. Second thing, a uh, third thing is Descartes does not trust authority. Why? It's because uh, authorities are tainted with prejudices. Okay? So, yan yung um, uh, philosophy ni Descartes. So, according to Descartes, there are four ways to arrive at certitude or there are four ways to arrive at absolute knowledge. First is never accept anything except it is clear and distinct. Ano ibig sabihin nito, class? Huwag kang tatanggap ng hindi klaro or hindi eksakto. Okay? So, laging dapat ta, laging dapat clear siya or eksakto siya. Okay? Second thing, divide ideas into many parts as needed to solve it. So, you have to divide ideas kung ano yung, kung ano yung hard, kung ano yung, kung ano yung yung madali. So, those are the things that kailangan nating gawin in order for us to solve this, uh, in order to solve these ideas easily. At the same time, uh, ito yung sinasabi ni ni, the, ni professor sa Money Heist, divide and conquer. Okay? Third one is arrange ideas from simplest to complex. So, magsimula tayo after dividing the ideas into parts, then arrange natin ito into simplest to complex. So, ibig sabihin nito, magsimula tayo sa madali hanggang sa mahirap. Okay? And last but not the least, never leave anything into chance. So, what does it mean? Is, wag nating, uh, wag, wag nating hayaan na sabihin natin sa isang bagay, bahala na, or bahala ng Diyos, or bahala na si Batman. So, never leave anything into chance. Okay? I think that's it. Let's proceed to the phenomenological method. Thank you so much, Sir Mark. Now, like what Sir Mark has said a while back, let's move to phenomenological methods. So what do we mean by it? Okay, so class, when we say phenomenology, it is the science of the essence of consciousness, which was founded by Edmund Husserl, the father of phenomenology. Actually, class, when we say phenomenology, it is something that we go beyond what is denoted. Okay, what do we mean by that? Okay, to state more simply, the purpose of phen phenomenological method is to describe experience, okay, that they are lived in phenomenological manner, okay? So the example of it is to capture the lived experiences of study of the participants like what the participants in the research, okay? So I hope that or, or I know that some of you already experience being researchers, right? So you are considered as uh, researchers of phenomenological method as you do or as you experience live experiences method or live experiences denotations or connotations. So what do we mean by that once again? So to become phenomenologists want to answer the question, what is the meaning of one's lived experience? Okay. So the very aim of this method is to actually articulate and to describe the imminent reality of our lived experiences. So we go beyond, okay, what is lived. So for example, um, when we find or when we look upon the flag, our own flag, okay, other people would uh, interpret it or what other people would say that flag is is a flag or it's just a um, it's just a thing but if we're going to delve deeper or if we're going to connote deeper of what what do we really mean when we say our flag 
it stands for our peace, for our freedom. Okay? So, it stands as being our Filipinos. Okay? So, actually, class, when we say phenomenology, okay, it describes the appearance of thing as a lived experience. So, like what I've said a while back, lived experiences like Christmas, like holidays, any holidays, New Year, birthdays, okay? That's an example of phenomenological method because... Um, we delve deeper of what do we really mean by that different celebrations or by that different uh, important celebrations that we have. Okay, so as you can see here in our presentation, okay, this phenomenological method is also um, can be seen or can be seen in our research. And that's an example under the what? under the conceptual conceptual research because phenomenological method or conceptual method is a type of method that is generally related to abstract ideas or concepts and it actually doesn't involve any practical experiments take note of that class that we don't need any practical experiments when we use phenomenological method and philosophical research studies are one of the best examples of using this kind of method okay so i will give you another example of the phenomenological method one of the activities or student activities maybe that you have experienced or that you have encountered is extemporaneous speaking so you can learn this or you can have this in your English, right? So through extemporaneous speaking or via a picture or via a photo, what you're going to do is to connote or to explain further what do we really mean by the photo given by the moderators. Okay, so what you are doing is you are reasoning out of the box okay you are thinking beyond the photo okay because that photo would mean that it has its own concept or idea okay that's why like what i've said a while back you don't need to have any practical experiment for you to reason out okay for you to explain that concept or idea one more thing that you should and but to yourself is that through phenomenological method is that it relates to abstract okay relates to abstract ideas and concepts and that's the core uh, meaning of what do we really mean when we say phenomenological method great thank you Ia. so to make a rejoinder to understand more this method, we have to first define what it means by phenomenolo phenomenology. When we say phenomenology, it comes from the Greek term phenomenon. And phenomenon literally means what appears, or it means appearances. So, when we say appearances, ito yung nakikita natin, ito yung nakifeel natin, ito yung uh, nalalasahan natin, or this, di kaya, these are the things that come from our sense from our senses okay however when you say phenomenological method we go beyond sense data okay we go beyond sense data and we talk about our imminent reality of our lived experience an example of that is yung ating uh, trophy yung nakikita natin sa trophy is yung height, yung figure, yung weight, ano pa ba, yung color. Okay? But when we talk about phenomenological method, we go beyond that appearances. Here, we are going to, we are going to, uh, to see the relationship between the object and the subject. At doon papasok yung live experience. So, kung titignan natin, for example, yung trophy ng senior high, ang nakikita natin doon is yung, yung weight niya, yung tangkad niya, yung, yung art niya, yung figure niya. But if we try to, to dig deeper, 
sa relationship natin, yung live experience natin dun sa trophy na yun, dun natin makikita yung ating oneness as community, dun natin makikita yung ating uh, togetherness as community, we work as one to succeed, to become a champion. Okay? Yan ang ibig sabihin ng phenomenological network. We analyze the pure consciousness of the relationship between the subject and the object. Okay? Yun ang ibig sabihin mo. And before we get to know the relationship and, um, and the relationship between the subject and the object, kailangan muna natin itong phenomenological reduction. What is this phenomenological reduction? This phenomenological reduction is also known as epoche. Or, or epoch or epoche. Epoche class means you suspend your bias to a thing or you you suspend your preconceived thoughts to a object, to an object. Tanggalin mo yung bias mo, tanggalin mo yung mga yung mga yung prejudices mo. Then allow the subject, uh, allow the object to to reveal its essence. Okay, yan yung ibig sabihin ng epoche. Okay? So, I think, um, hindi na bago sa atin tong phenomenology, phenomenological methods because we Filipinos are very sentimental. Okay? An example dyan is yung um, yeah, watawat, sinabi ni, ni Ma'am Ia. Ang nakikita natin sa watawat is yung rectangular shape niya, yung color red, yung color blue, tapos the three stars. But if we try to associate our live experience dyan sa watawat niya, it tells us the heroic actions of our Filipino people. Okay? And when we talk about object, it can be tangible or intangible. Okay? Pwede yung nakikita natin, nakawakan natin, meron din yung mga intangible. An example of that is Christmas. When we talk about Christmas, di ba, ang nakikita, ang, ang nakikita natin is yung appearances, di ba? The bright lights, ano ba ba? Uh, the gifts that we have, yung mga delicious food na handahan natin. But if we dig deeper, if we try to know the consciousness, the awareness natin sa sa concept na to, uh, makikita natin yung 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 gener- generosity. Ayan. The same time, yung forgiveness ng mga tao. The same time, if we try to be religious or to be spiritual, we try to associate uh, the birth of Jesus Christ here sa Christmas na to. Okay? It's the birth of our of our Redeemer. Okay? So, that's all about phenomenological method. Ang pinaka-core nito is to analyze the pure relationship between the self and the object. Okay? That's phenomenological, phenomenological method. We go beyond appearances which is richer in content. Okay? Okay, let's proceed to scientific method. Okay, take it away, Ma'am, um, Ma'am Ia. Okay, class. So, when we say scientific method, it came from the Greek word sensia, which means to produce knowledge okay so it came from the greek word sensia science okay therefore empirical or scientific method is to what produce knowledge to produce information and it also known that like what i said a while back it also known as empirical method okay so when we say empirical method it actually um with the use of tools with the use of instruments for us to gather what's truth behind that okay so it is a process of determining the truth through investigation and observation inductive or from general to particular deductive from particular to general methods and hypothetical reasoning so what do you mean by that Okay, so in empirical uh, method class, this is the study where conclusions of the study are drawn from evidence. Okay, taking note of that, from evidence that are verifiable by observations 
or experiences rather than theory. Okay, rather than, rather than theory or pure logic. So, ang pagkakaintindi natin dito, class, there is uh, what we call the phenomena that are observable and measurable. Okay, so dapat na describe natin siya and at the same time nabibilang natin siya. So, in phenomenological, like what I've said a while back, okay, let's go back, okay, that in phenomenological, there is no practical experiments, okay? We don't need to uh, scientifically uh, reason out, okay, kung, kung bakit ganito, kung bakit ganyan. It doesn't have any process. But in empirical, we have this so-called scientific process or scientific method in which we investigate, we observe, in the process or in a step-by-step -step process for us to get what's the truth, okay? So what do we mean by that once again? So it includes both quantitative and qualitative methods. So ano kaya tong mga to? So when we say quantitative, ito yung mga measurable. Dapat nabibilang natin siya, okay? So dapat nabibilang natin tong uh, mga bagay na ito. So for example, in your research, um, ilan ang mga ilan ang mga estudyante? For example, your study is all about academic performance um, amidst the COVID-19. Okay, so for example, yun ang study niyo. Now, okay, that method that you are going to use is the scientific method or the empirical method in a way na dapat yung mga participants niyo ay nabibilang niyo. And by that, as you gather or as you investigate. And as you gather all the uh, data and information that uh, you need to have, okay, um, dapat alam ninyo kung ilang percentage ang hindi gusto or hindi, uh, what do you call this one, hindi applicable sa kanya the way ng learning style niya ang online. And at the same time, ilan naman ang mga batang aktibo pa rin despite the online platform or despite the COVID-19 that we are experiencing right now. Okay, so that's the example being measurable or quantifiable. But when we say um, observable and that is qualitative, dapat nadi-describe natin. Okay, nadi-describe natin itong situation na to. Ano bang meron okay, sa educational system natin ngayon? Okay, and by that, you are using empirical method in a way na nadi-describe mo yung sitwasyon na to or nadi-describe mo yung mga pangyayari na nararanasan ng mga tao ngayon. Okay? And by that, if you are going to combine that through your observations by having the observable and the measurable um, tools, okay, now malalaman mo dito the hypothetical, hypothetical rather, hypothetical reasoning or the hypothetical result, result of your study. Okay, thank you, Ma'am Ia. Uh, at the same time, let me give my uh, part also. When we talk about scientific method, we draw the conclusion or we, we, came, uh, we can know about truth through scientific investigation by using instruments or tools. An example of scientific method is na ginagamit natin ngayong and pandemic is the swab test or the RT-PCR test. Okay? Ano pa yung mga ginagamit natin to know about truth? Um, we have DNA test. So, scientific yan. We have paraffin test. We have ballistic test. And also, may din tayong tinatawag na lie detector test. So, those are kinds of scientific method. We draw truth sa mga yun draw conclusion sa mga mga instruments na yon Okay? So, um, one of the main problem lang siguro ng scientific method is na uh, nagkakamali siya is because of uh, human error. Okay? So, once nagkamali ang, ta uh, once nagkamali ang tao sa pag-test, basically, nagkakamali din yung yung result, nagkakamali din yung information. So, maybe uh, that's the main problem dito sa method na to, in arriving at truth. Dapat walang human error. Okay? For, for example, sa swap test, dapat hindi ka pwede magkamali dito kasi buhay na ang nakataya dito eh. Okay? 
in which uh, dapat uh, accurate or di kaya I will say it, it should be perfect. Dapat talagang uh, yung margin error is 0.1 lang. Okay? So, it should be concrete. So, same as true with DNA test. Di ba? Ang DNA test, talaga dapat uh, correct yan. Kasi once nagkamali ka, uh, mapupunta sa ibang tao yung bata, so on, so on, so on, so forth. So, maybe the main problem lang dito na nakakamali ang um, nakakatalo when it comes to knowing the truth because of human error. One problem siguro na na-encounter ninyo sa media is the case of yung si Desera, yung flight attendant. Yung unang investigation, ang sabi ng PNP, ng med- med- medical legal team, is wala nang, wala nang fluids na natira sa katawan niya. But all of a sudden, nung, nag, nung nag, nag-investigate ang NBI, merong I think 1 liter, 7 liters na fluid. How come? So, meron talagang nakamali. The, the scientific method is is, ano yun? Um, in arriving truth in scientific method, it's really absolute knowledge. However, nagkakaroon lang ng pagkakamali, pagkakamali it's because of yan, human error. I think that's all I can share. Now, let's proceed to the last but not the least, the historical method. For the historical method class comes from the Greek term utopia. It means to investigate or to find out. Okay? And this method involves gathering evidences, examining them, and formulating ideas in the past to come up with the present truth. So, ano ibig sabihin nito? That we gather historical truths, kuha tayo ng historical knowledge coming from elders, coming from authorities, Kung kanina, hindi tayo naniniwala sa authorities like method. Pero dito, kailangan natin ng authorities. Kailangan natin ng mga witnesses to be exact in formulating ideas in the past to come up with the present truth. So, ginagamit ang historical method sa mga case studies. Yan. Kapag gumagawa ng case studies, yan. Ini-involve yung historical uh, method kasi nag-gather ka ng evidences, nag-gather ka ng mga mga, mga facts. Okay? At the same time, another example of this historical method is yung favorite ko na pinapanood sa UMA, which is the eyewitness documentaries. So, kapag gumagawa ng documentaries yung mga reporters, lalong-lalo na mga about uh, about history, yung historical bagka, historical method talaga ginagamit nila. They cite authorities, they cite studies, they cite facts, na pa ba? Uh, they, they gather um, they gather facts of the past and yun, pagsamasamahin to present the present truths. Okay? I think that's all we can share about the methods of philosophizing. Now, let's proceed to the second part which is the nature of truth. And that will be uh, discussed to you by Sir John Emmanuel Dulim and Ma'am Rohan. So, Sir John, take it away. Thank you, Sir Anog. Good afternoon, everyone. So, my topic will be the nature of truth. Sa mundo ng pilosopiya, Isa sa pinakapaboritong tema sa bawat usapin ay ang katotohanan. Karamihan sa mga pilosopo ay binubuhos ang kanilang buong buhay sa pag-aaral kung ano ito. Lahat ng mga ganda at malalarim na diskusyon patungkol sa katotohanan ay nagmula rito. Ngunit, ang pag-aaral ng katotohanan ay hindi kasing hirap ng pagsasabuhay nito. Marami sa mga tao ang maalam o ano ang ibig sabihin ng katotohanan, ngunit hindi lahat ay kayang isabuhay ku ano ang kahulugan nito. Mahirap magpakatotoo dahil ang katotohanan ay laging hindi maganda. Mahirap magpakatotoo dahil ang katotohanan ay masakit at laging nakakasakit. Ngunit, garun paman, ang hindi kagandahan ng katotohanan ay hindi hadlang sa pagsasabuhay nito. Dahil ang sakit ng katotohanan ay hindi sakit na nakakasira. 
ang sakit na dulot nito ay sakit na nakabubuo ng pagkatao na kailangan natin bilang isang nilalang ng Diyos. Ngunit, ano nga ba ang ibig sabihin ng katotohanan? In the philosophy of St. Thomas Aquinas, the angelic doctor of the Roman Catholic Church, one of the greatest theologians and philosophers of this scholastic period in medieval era, he stated that truth is one of the transcendental properties of being. Thus, he defined thereof as adequatio intellectus et rei, meaning truth is the adequation of the mind and reality. With this, St. Thomas Aquinas asserted that truth is bereft, the truth if bereft of substance, sorry, uh, the truth is bereft of substance if the idea in the mind does not correspond to the reality in the world. In other words, in order for you to consider that an idea can be considered as real or there is truth in a certain idea, that idea has to correspond in the reality. Thomas Aquinas in his metaphysics categorized truth in three ways. The first one is the logical truth. Logical truth means the agreement of mind and reality. Uh, the best example of this is that when you think of a chair, you can consider that the chair is true when you see the chair in the physical world. If the chair that you imagine does not exist in the physical world, it follows that there is no truth in what you are imagining. The second one is the moral truth. Moral truth, according to Thomas Aquinas, is the agreement of idea and speech. Um, dito papasok yung value ng honesty. That's why ang tawag sa kanya is moral truth. It has something to do with right or wrong. So, uh, in order for you to attain moral truth, uh, the things that you are thinking has to correspond with what you are going to say. The last one is the ontological truth. When we say ontological truth, it is the agreement between the idea and being. Uh, in the Metaphysics of Thomas Aquinas, uh, he discussed about the essence. When we say essence, it refers to the very nature or the very purpose why a being exists. So when you think of a being, you need to think of him or her based on his or her essence. So ibig sabihin kung hindi akma yung, ini yung iniisip mo dun sa essence ng isang bagay or ng isang tao, ang ibig sabihin nun ay walang katotohanan dun sa idea na meron ka. For example, when you think of a ball pen as a weapon, ibig sabihin walang katotohanan dun because the, the very essence of a ball pen is for writing. So uh, those are uh, the three categories of truth according to uh, Thomas Aquinas. But why is it important to study truth? Truth is important because it has been a part of our being. We need to be true because it is the truest way to be human. We need to be true because truth is a way of life. Truth has to be practiced because truth is love. In loving, man needs to be true because without truth, everything in love and in life is deception. In philosophy, there are three ways to measure the facticity or the truth in every being. The first one is the coherence theory of truth. The second one is the correspondence theory of truth. And the third one is the pragmatic theory of truth. In this session, I will be discussing the correspondence theory of truth. Uh, next slide, sir. Correspondence theory of truth refers to the theory uh, refers to something that something 
is true if it corresponds to reality or the actual state of affairs. This philosophy of is related to the philosophy of Martin Heidegger when he discussed the concept of requirement of the moment. That the essence of every being depends upon the necessity of time and event. When we have to remember that truth is relative. Or in other words, uh, we can say that truth is subjective. It depends upon the perception of uh, the subject. And in this case, the relativity of truth depends upon the context. In other words, context gives meaning to the being. For example, a mammal is an animal which is warm-blooded, as hair and feeds its young with milk, and milk is considered to be true. Next one, sir. Oh, he said that's example. Uh, another example that I can give you is that uh, in the Roman Catholic Church, in the sacrament of Holy Eucharist, we have uh, the symbol of bread and wine. And in our religion, we believe that during the Eucharistic celebration, particularly on the part where the priest consecrates the bread and wine, we believe that the bread and wine will become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. In other religion or in the context of other religion, that practice Christ himself it became very substantial and very meaningful because it has something to give us. So based from that example, we can say that uh, the, Holy, the Holy Eucharist is very meaningful because it belongs to the Roman Catholic Church or it gains meaning because it is under the context of the Roman Catholic Church. But if you're going to transfer it to the context of other religion, it will be it will become absurd. So, what can, we learn, what can we learn from this theory? My dear students, you need to remember that each and every one of us has a meaning and purpose in life. Other people may not appreciate who you are, but that doesn't mean that they are correct. It seems that you are at the wrong place. Regardless of their opinion, just be true to yourself. Be true to yourself and be true to other people. You don't need to change in order for you to be accepted because the right group of people will, will accept and appreciate you no matter what. Okay, so that's all for the next uh, theories. Mamro and Mejia will be Thank you very much, Sir John Emmanuel Dulin. For Thank the you. second theory of truth, we have um, the coherence theory of truth. In this theory, in this theory, it proposes that something is true if it makes sense when placed in a certain situation or context. So, based on this perspective, there is a possibility that various truths from different viewpoints or perspective will emerge. Next, sir. So, a concept or idea or a statement is true if it makes sense in its own context and it is um, consistent enough to be true or which renders it or when it is considered true, if um, if an idea or a statement is true because it makes sense in its own context and that has a certain degree of consistency which renders its true. 
to police. A coherence theory bases the truth of a belief, a person's belief, but it could be any body of knowledge. In philosophies of idealism, all ideas or beliefs are said to be cohere with one another, perhaps because the world is a reason self or created by a rational agent. In a scientific theory or in scientific theories, every new observational fact must be integrated with existing facts to make them maximally coherent. So in scientific um, fields, if you have discovered new observational facts, you have to um, um, compare it, you have to connect it or integrate it with the existing facts for you to be able to assess if that new observational fact is true or not. In this theory, it states that the truth of any true proposition consists in its coherence with some specified set of propositions. For example, in analytic language philosophy, the truth of a proposition depends on its agreement with some larger sets of propositions, ideally all known true propositions and any logical inferences from those propositions. What are the arguments that we can see in this theory? So we have two principal lines of argument um, that have led um, philosophers to adopt a coherence theory of truth. Early advocates of um, coherence theories were persuaded by reflection on the metaphysical questions. More recently, um, epistemological and systematic considerations have been the basis for this coherence um, theories. How about the criticisms that we can see in, in this um, coherence theory of truth? Any coherence theory of truth faces two principal challenges. The first may be called specification objection. And the second is the transcendence objection. Next slide, please. So we have an example here. For instance, our brothers and sisters, our Muslim brothers and sisters, they believe that some animals such as pigs are unclean. And this fact or this belief forbids them from eating or consuming pork and other foods derived from unclean animals. In the framework of Islamic faith, the notion that consuming or eating pork will make people filthy makes logical or it makes sense. But for non-Muslims, um, they do not share this belief and so they do not practice this um, belief of not eating pork. So in coherence theory of truth, we can see in here in our example that this belief of not eating animals that are considered unclean is actually applicable only to the Islamic faith. It is only applicable to a specific context, situation, or in this case, in a group of people. Next, we have... Um, um, the theory of next we have uh, the third the theory of truth the pragmatic theory of truth this theory holds uh, the view that something is true if we put it into practice or is useful in real life it also believes that ideas should be continually tested to confirm their validity in the first uh, or in the second theory of truth, we have mentioned that you have to integrate, for instance, in our example, example earlier in the scientific field, if you, if you discovered a new observable fact, you have to integrate it to the existing observable fact that have been discovered. But for um, this 
theory or this pragmatic theory, you have to continually test the truth to confirm their validity. So a related theory, um, verificationism, considers that ideas must be verified using the senses or experience. Next. I, the scientific method where experiments are designed to test hypotheses or confirm conclusions is an example of pragmatic approach in determining the truth. Additionally, pragmatic theories of truth are usually associated either with C.S. Peirce's proposal that true beliefs will be accepted at the end of the inquiry or with William James' proposal that more broadly, however, Pragmatic theories of truth focus on the connect between the truth and the epistemic practices, notably practices of inquiry and assertion. For first, pragmatic of truth, pragmatism. Eighteen seventy, the truth of this pragmatism is that. For any statement to be meaningful, it must have practical bearings. So Pierce saw the pragmatic account of meaning as a method of clearing up metaphysics and aiding scientific inquiry. For James' pragmatic theory, truth happens to an idea. It becomes true, is made true by events. Its verity is in fact an event or is considered as a process. And the process, namely, it's verifying itself, it's verification. Its validity is the process of its validation. Pragmatic theories of truth tend to view truth as a function of the practices people engage in and the commit commitments people make when they solve problems, make assertions, or conduct scientific inquiry. More broadly, pragmatic theories tend to emphasize the significant role the concept of truth plays. Um, it focuses or it emphasizes the role of the concept of truth, which um, which is visible across a range of disciplines and discourses. Not scientific and fact-stating discourse, but also we have ethical, legal, and political discourse as well. Moreover, practical or pragmatic theories of truth emphasize the broader practical and performative dimensions of truth talk, stressing the role truth plays in shaping certain kinds of discourse. These practical dimensions according to the Theories are essential understanding the concept of truth. So, if we are to um, we are to compare the um, the two uh, theories of truth, in the second theory of truth, we have to um, we have to consider the context for us to determine the truth. But for pragmatic theory of truth, we have to consider now the practical um, dimensions or the practice of um, the practice or the practical dimensions in order for us to understand the concept of truth and uh, to summarize the theories of truth in order to thrive people require the truth about the world yes it is critical to tell the truth and believing something that isn't real is likely to derail or ruin people's goals and possibly put their lives at risk. Telling what is not true or what is not real may result in illegal and societal consequences or punishments. Conservice or conversely, a dedicated pursuit of truth characterizes the good scientist, the good historian, and the good detective and now that um, class that you are watching maybe this 
a dedicated pursuit of truth will characterize now the future um, businesswoman, the future businessman, the future accountant, the future engineer, the future architects. These will characterize you. So this um, this um, topic of uh, theories of truth will help us determine what is true, what is real in life. And that is the goal of um, philosophy, to be able to grasp what is real. And that's all for the, the nature of truth or the theories of truth. Thank you so much, Sir Mark Anog, Sir Jan Emanuel Dulin, Ma'am Raan Mejia for discussing about the methods of philosophizing and the different theories and nature of truth. So there you, there you have it, young philosophers. So I hope you have learned something in our academic session for today. And I want you to be reminded, my dear students, that after you have watched this video lecture okay kindly um, move to your lms and check it out because what you are going to do is to write one line and give one captivated learning insight that you have acquired in our discussion okay so your answer must be placed in the lms discussion board so your teacher will uh prompt you where are you going to answer okay and that's the discussion board in your lms so take note class that this will serve as your attendance in our scheduled teleconference so failure to do so will be considered absent okay so i hope that is clear class sir mark you have something to tell none ma'am thank you so much for this session all right now as we end our discussion may we dispose ourselves as we pray our closing prayer in the name of the father the son and the holy spirit amen heavenly father we thank you for allowing us to end this class successfully we thank you for letting us share and interact with my fellow teachers meaningfully with each other online. May we not be together physically, but through your blessing, Father God, we will be able to learn and advance our knowledge and skills. Father, grant that we continue to pursue the education of our students despite the problems that come our way. May you allow each of us to gain more information that we could use to serve other people and our students. May you send us your Holy Spirit to guide us in sharing this information throughout the world. And Heavenly Father, as we evaporate in this online platform, we pray for the safety of our students, of our families, Father God and all the people around the world. And this we pray in my name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you so much, young philosophers. See you at our next conference. Goodbye.